I'm here in the Adelaide Hills at Kerner Wine and Damo Kerner uh, has just taken me through the most magnificent tasting of 21 wines, um, which we took a really long time to do, three hours nearly, uh, but it was really good, totally worth it. So these are six of um, mine and as it turns out, yours too. Yeah, yeah, we matched up perfectly. Yeah, six of my top wines from that huge tasting, and so we're just gonna we're just gonna dive right in. So, in the first class, this is the 2021 Gully View Single Vineyard Riesling from Clare Valley. Yeah, Tell it us is. About that. Uh, <clears throat> good place to start. It is my favourite wine that we make every year. It's the first grape we pick every year. It's the original block that Mum and Dad um, owned from when we were kids, and yeah, it's it's on a beautiful piece of limestone. It's 75% uh, fermented in egg, 25 still, beautiful texture, the, the limestone minerality, um, yeah, just, just classic water bowl. I really loved that in the context of your other Rieslings because there's four Rieslings, three single vineyard and one which was um, a combination of the three vineyards and you ferment in four, four parcels in ceramic egg and six in stainless steel. Yeah, so we get different... Uh, you know, you get, tend to get more texture from the eggs, um, you know, m more steer characters from the still. And um, personally, I love the texture and the minerality that we get from this wine. So it's usually more egg. Um, yeah, this year, 75% egg. Uh, and <clears throat> just that beautiful limestone mineral so character. Good. You know, it's, you think about a limestone rock, it's quite soft. And I feel this wine's really soft and gentle and easy to drink. And, but at the same time, quite complex and nice. It's airy and it's spacious and it's layered and it's delicate, but it's also got that really great Clare Valley kind of volume and density. So it's a really exciting wine and it was my favorite of your Riesling. So um, moving into the second wine, this is the 2021 Sauvignon. So you might notice there's um, the Kerner range and the Leco range. Leco is LE for Lenswood. KO for Kerner. KO so. for Kerner. So this is the Adelaide Hills range, effectively, and this is the Clare Valley. Yeah, so Kerner's, we like to keep them separate because they're two very different regions. They're the two regions we work with. Um, and yeah, we're trying to make wines that uh, sh that show a place. So we want the Kerner's to be different to the Leco. Same business, same everything else. Yeah, this is Savignon growing, growing uh, Bauhanna Deanery Vineyard. Um, it's a site that I've always Loved, it's very south facing, sort of bony soils, lots of quartz. It was always Sab Blanc. Um, I know the grower quite well, Alan Dean, and I've always been at him to graft it to Savignon. And this is the first wine we've ever made off the graft. And yeah, just, there's no skin contact. Again, it's fermented in egg, just chasing purity and freshness. And, you know, it's high acid and, and uh, but it's briny and it's salty and it's textural and it's delicious. And part of the reason why I chose this wine um, is because the, there's a, a Blanc. Can you grab that bottle? Mm. It's over, it's over, over there. there. <laughs> We're using it. Um, there's a Blanc, which has got 5% Chardonnay, a lean parcel that year, right? To kind of yeah, tighten, tighten it up a little. Up a little bit. But it's got skin contact. 20 days on skin. Yes. Yeah. So it's really textural and exciting and delicious. And stylistically, I found it was aligned to the Pagato. And that's why I didn't include it because... They're two, not similar, but stylistically um, similar wines. But I really loved the Blanc. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, and, and it's seeing Sauvignon again. And um, we were talking about it earlier. I think Sauvignon's one of the underrated white varieties of the hills. You know, it, it grows beautifully up here. So much versatility in style. And um, yeah, this one's, we're chasing purity here and a bit of fun with the other one. And this is much finer. What did, what did Jono say? He said, um, you let your hair down with the Blanc and you suit up for the seven <laughs> yet. Um, and it is, this is, this is finer and more streamlined and more tense. There's more tension in this wine than the Blanc, but um, both of them equally very exciting, delicious wines. Um, moving into the third wine, this was maybe my favourite wine. Not maybe, this was my favourite wine that they have made in this massive lineup of wines that you yeah, do. I, I'm super, super happy to hear on this it's, wine. it's the wine <laughs> that I stress it. about the most. Oh, man. Adelaide Hill Chardonnay, a, you know, it's, the, it's the grape of the hills at the moment and I, I, I guess there's a, a bit of pressure to make a good Chardonnay. Um, Which they've done. Um, thank, where's the fruit you. from? So it's Piccadilly Valley, uh, where's that which from is here? literally 10 minutes back towards Adelaide. So we're sort of similar altitudes to Lenswood. <clears throat> um, it's probably a little bit colder in Lenswood, but we, uh, you're right on the edge of the hills in the Piccadilly Valley, so it's always overcast, always cloudy, tends to make sort of more powerful wines. Um, Lenswood, a little bit leaner, more citrus, but 
So this is um, a combination of Dijon clone 77 and 95? Uh, this is all 76. Yep, cool, got that right. <laughs> um, full Malo. Lenses were 95 and 76. Okay, yeah. oh, thank God. Close. Um, full Malo, really textural, um, but it's got real precision and line. And, and the phenolics, it's like quite powerful initially, but the phenolics really come in and lace it all together. It's really exciting drinking, but it's also very high quality as well, which is a really um, important combination of the, of the two things. So... Um, Moving sadly away from this wine and into the next wine, the Pagato. So um, this is Vermentino, and this is the most delicious Vermentino I've had in a really long time. Slash the most delicious Vermentino I've had. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Vermentino fermented on skins. Uh, so yeah, we're moving back to Clare now. So we're in Waterville on limestone again. Um, yeah, it's this is our biggest selling. Biggest production wine. Um, it's probably, Which is how much? Well, we, I think we did 1,400 dozen in 21. We did 10 in 2014 when we started. 10 dozen. 10 dozen. Um, Why? <laughs> how long have you got? Yeah, enough. Because <laughs> uh, that's all Dad would give us. You can have the little bits left, the machine harvester leaves around the post. You can go and pick it by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Good <'Cause>, though. <laughs> yeah. You've got to learn, you've got to start somewhere. And, um, but yeah, now, now we get the whole block minus KT takes a couple of rows. Um, but yeah, it's, it's evolved into this wine and it's all designed around drinking and easy drinking. Texture. Texture. <laughs> don't think too hard about it. Um, you know, still, I, I still think it's an interesting, complex wine, but... Um, yeah, I was going to say, not thinking too hard about it is underselling it, because it is actually quite complex and texturally engaging and exciting. It's exciting drinking, um, and if you're looking for a change from something that you normally drink, um, this is really, this is really good. I really like this one. I was very excited by it. Yeah, Vermentino, yeah, nice, who knew? <laughs> nice summer, summer sort of drinking it white is, wine. It is. Um, so I've chosen two reds here, a Gamay and a Sangiovese, one from... Adelaide Hills, one from Clare Valley, so I feel like we're covering a few bases there. Um, but here is the 2021 Gamay from the Adelaide Hills. Talk us through this. So the Gamay is from the exact same block as the Savignon we tried earlier. Um, and it, again, it's been something that's been in my head for a long time and convinced the grower to graft it from Sab Blanc to Gamay. So this is the first... Big, big move in the hills. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's, although it's happening everywhere now and there's lot, lots of gamay going in. Good. Um, but yeah, this is the first crop we got off of it. So half a hectare, got 430 kilos, which is enough to fill one uh, he hogshead, hogshead. So yeah, 300 litres, 30 dozen. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I love the wine. We picked it super early. It's 11.9% alcohol, so super lean, tight. Nice, like still good intensity of flavour. Um, I think it's a, a, you know, I love Gamay in general, Beaujolais. Um, Get in line. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good starting point and we can, we can definitely build on this. And, you know, we're planting some Gamay up the back here in Lenswood. Yeah. Um, I think it's got huge potential in the hills. I found this really exciting because it's, it's everything we love from Gamay. It's, it's fine and crunchy and spicy and pure. Um, but it's also, like, I think maybe, I'm going to say it again, and that's textural, but I think all of these wines are really textural and, and engaging in that way. Not just, not just fruit and acid and, you know, oak, but they've, they've really got extra elements of complexity in terms of the way that they feel in the mouth. And this, is, this has got that. And so the 11% alcohol comes across mentally. I'm like, wow, that's very low <laughs> for a red wine. But it's really pure and translates really nicely in the mouth. I think it's a really lovely wine. So if this is your first like crack at it, <laughs> good job, because it's fantastic. Yeah, it all works and that those other components add to the wine. And mm. It's not all about the alcohol and whatever, so. Um, and in the final glass, Clare Valley Sangiovese. Yep. Talk about this, I love this, I love this. So this is a wine we've been working on for a while now, putting a lot of effort into Sangiovese. Um, working with different, uh, different clones in Clare. Um, and <clears throat> again, yeah, picking early and making a more expressive sort of fine bone style, but we're holding it back longer in the cellar, letting it uh, develop some complexity, some secondary characters, you know, that more savory, spicy, dusty kind of Italian profile. 
Um, so this is the 2021, 2021 and not released until May next year, is that right? Yeah, that's what we're working May 2023. Mm. Um, I can see how, I mean, you were previously releasing this one around now. Probably now, yeah. And I can see how you would do that because it's, it's like delicious. It's irresistibly bright and vibrant. It's got a really lovely skeleton of tannin um, and it's got a really lovely black tea graphite mineral sort of finished um, now. But I can see where there's going to be like hung deli meat and pus, like yeah, yeah. pastrami yeah. and pink peppercorn and all these other characters that are going to be creeping through the finish and that will be very exciting. Yeah, and um, we look at sort of the, we've only released it a few times. We did one in 16, 18, and we look back at those ones and it's like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're, they're looking pretty bloody good now. Um, imagine if everyone else got to drink it at that point rather than yeah. drinking it so young. So, yeah, it's a big focus across our whole range is starting to hold wines back and release them when, they're, when we think they're ready rather than just getting them out in the market. I think that's good. I think they'll take a, you'll take a hit early for that, right? Like it's going to be hard yeah, holding yeah. them back, but good in the it, long term. It's a long-term long vision. Um, I have looked at these wines over the years um, in isolation, one and two at a time perhaps, but never like this. And it was a really exciting, um, it was a really exciting tasting. Like I love what you guys are doing. It's really prefacing um, sight expression and varietal expression, but you have a very clear overlay of style on these wines, which is also makes them really exciting and different from the other wines that are made by your peers. So. Yeah, I loved it. I'm really thrilled you. that you guys uh, took thanks, the time to show me this. Thanks for stopping by. I'm, I'm glad it took four hours. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not often we get to, to do this as well, so it's always fun. Um, and yeah, uh, we're lucky 21 was an amazing vintage in South Australia. So And 22 also. 22 is looking just as good. Yeah. We looked at a few things from Barrel earlier and 20, the, I mean, it's always too early to tell from Barrel. You can understand the, the quality that you might get, but in terms of the detail, it can be difficult to judge. But the 22s are just looking so awesome, really like yeah. um, flavorful and- So much flavor full. and yeah, the acidity is through the roof and everything we want in wine, it's yeah. there. So oh, well, happy days. Can't wait to see them again. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs>